Well, obviously, it's uh, an exciting time. Uh, first uh, game, uh, 32nd year for me in doing this. So, um, uh, but first year here at LSU. So, uh, you know, really uh, for me, um, you know, taking uh, an LSU football team um, into its first week of preparation for a game against a, you know, really good Florida State team is. Um, you know, one that uh, I think there's, uh, you know, around the office, there's a heightened sense of uh, excitement. Uh, everybody is uh, anticipating um, a great week. And, you know, our preparation has been one where, you know, certainly you, you want to see the culmination of uh, your team come together and, and play outstanding football. So, um, you know, this week will be uh, certainly with a Sunday game will be uh, a little bit um, different in terms of the days, but it'll be the same in terms of our process. Um, today is really kind of a day off for our guys. We treat this kind of like a Sunday. Um, tomorrow will be our, you know, our mental Monday day uh, where it's a lot of, uh, you know, game planning, uh, scouting reports, uh, things of that nature. We'll team meet. Uh, we'll go over um, – essentially how we should be thinking this week about our opponent, uh, the awareness that we need to have about how we play the game. You know, there's a lot of things. Going on the road for the first time, even though it is um, in New Orleans, uh, we are, you know, taking our team away from campus, um, how we handle ourselves in the dome, um, how not to be distracted in the first game, um, the importance of uh, all of the traits that we talk about uh, in, in an opener. Uh, Florida State's already had an opener. Uh, so they've already gone through that kind of routine. So we'll spend a lot of time talking about that tomorrow, and then we get into, you know, our first day, um, you know, which is, you know, Wednesday, but it's a, an attitude Tuesday for us, uh, you know, coming with the right attitude, um, you know, getting after it in a practice situation is probably our most physical day uh, when we talk about uh, our first padded practice day. Um, Tuesday, um, our Wednesday, or again, you know, moving forward in the week itself, the Thursday, uh, is about, you know, being gritty. You know, you've, you've got to really focus and refocus through that practice because it is, um, you know, the longer of the practices. You want to make sure you get all of your preparation work in. Um, Thursday, which would be Friday during the week, is, is about being perfect. Red zone situation, situational substitution, third and long, two minute, all of those things uh, take place on, on our Thursday, which again, you know, we go into a helmet and shoulder pad situation. Practice is shorter. It's about an hour, an hour and five minutes, which leads us into our Friday, which is about focus. Focus Friday is a, is a walkthrough situation for us. Um, we'll, we'll do situational substitution again, but again, Usually the first 20 plays of our scripted plays we're going through defensively, making sure that we've got all the right personnel moving from nickel, maybe to goal line, making sure that all of those things are done right on Friday, um, which is obviously Saturday. And then, you know, we get into Sunday, and uh, I like to work our team out on game day uh, when it's a night game. So we'll go to the dome. Um, we'll work the guys out. We'll move them around. Um, we'll work up a sweat uh, in the morning, and um, again, I, I don't like to keep the guys uh, locked up in the hotel room all day when we have a night game. So, again, we'll go to the dome, get get the sense of of uh, the surroundings. So, again, we're not distracted and seeing uh, the insides of the dome for the first time. Um, and again, getting them moving. Uh, so we break the day up a little bit get back, we'll have lunch, they'll have some time off pre-game meal, and then ready to kick it off. So um, that's kind of an insight into the week. Uh, and and uh, then it's uh, from there, successful Saturday. Uh, and then we'll assess everything uh, on Monday and get right back to work uh, because, as we know, it's a, it's a short week. So playing a, you know, a team that I'm quite familiar with opened up against Florida State last year. Um, so... Um, know Mike very well. Mike Norvell's done a really 
outstanding job in, in developing this football team. Um, they're, they're a disciplined group now. Uh, it wasn't the same group that we saw a couple years ago. Last year, they took us to overtime, the team that I coached last year. And, um, you know, it's a, a team that has some talented players. Um, defensively, uh, physicality at, at the defensive line position, um, athletes at the second level uh, and in the backfield. Um, and then from an offensive standpoint, um, you know, it starts at the quarterback position. Um, and Jordan Travis, I think he's uh, certainly, from my perspective, uh, a great competitor, um, can make things happen. You know, people use dual threat quarterback. He can throw the football and he runs. He keeps plays alive for him. He didn't have to do a lot of that on Saturday. But, um, you know, he's led by a, a deep and talented receiving core. And then, you know, what we saw on Saturday was rushing for 406 yards. So that certainly gets your attention. Uh, any team that runs for 400 yards, regardless of who the competition. And Duquesne had, you know, some nice wins last year. You know, they beat a, a really good MAC team in Ohio last year. So this is a team that, um, you know, has a good program. So um, it, it'll, be a, it'll be a great opener for us um, and, and one that we're excited about. So uh, with that, I'll open it up uh, to questions. Hey, Brian. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon. Yes. Um, since you were here in this room December 1st meeting with us for the first time to now, how, how much how much have you gotten done that you wanted to get done? How, how, how ready are you? Do you always want more time sure. for an opener? Yeah, you know, I, I think there's, there's a couple of things that stand out. One, I, I think our guys fully understand um, and have been actively engaged um, in, in our process. And, and I, I know you hear that all the time and, and, you know, you, you look at it as, as maybe uh, coach speak, but, you know, our process has really begun to take hold with, with our players. Uh, it's not for them. We're just throwing something against the wall and see what sticks. They know it's extremely intentional. Everything that we do from, you know, check, checking their sleep patterns to um, what they put in their body to how we practice. And so that kind of total preparation, they, they understand that now. And so um, I, I feel really good about the fact that, that our team has understood and has really bought into um, the, the process of preparing themselves for you know, this opener. Um, there'll be other challenges along the way. You know, we're going to have to stay, you know, in our zone. There's going to be some challenges and some ups and downs that we're going to have to handle. Um, but I feel good about it based upon where we've come from since December. Hey, Coach Brian Kelly, right here in the middle. Yes, uh, last Tuesday, you said the competition with Jane Daniels and Garrett Nelsmeyer was really close. You possibly will come to decision by the end of the week and maybe Monday. Yes. Have you, do you have an update on the uh, quarterback battle? Yeah, we have. Uh, we've made a decision, but I'm not going to announce it publicly. Um, and, and again, this is for, um, you know, the certain, certainly I think everybody here wants to know who the quarterback is. I get that. But I think it's a tactical advantage for us not to announce it. So I'm going to hold that. Um, announcement because I think it gives us a tactical advantage for not playing. Look, Florida State played a game. That's an advantage for them, um, having the opportunity to play. Um, the advantage for us is that we haven't played. And so it doesn't help us to give up any of our cards in that sense. So we're going to hold on to that card um, until game day. Uh, Brian Wilson, Alexander from The Advocate. Um, the status of, of John Emery at this point, is, is he going to miss the first two games? Uh, is there any change in that? Yeah, so I, I've spoken on this before in, in that, you know, John's done everything that, that would allow him to be in good standing in the football program. But, you know, I have uh, things that are out of my control as it relates to who I can play. Um, and, and that's not something that I can comment on. Coach Andre Champagne, KLSU. What do you think the key is going to be to stop Jordan Travis's run game? 
<laughs> the key will be, you know, obviously, you know, playing great defense at all three levels, right? You know, we just talked about their ability to run the football. If you can run the football that effectively, uh, Jordan Travis can have a field day out there. So we've got to be able to stop the run, first of all, um, and, and be effectively, you know, uh, stopping the run. Uh, I think that that is going to limit Jordan Travis, and if we can force him to be predictable throwing the football, that's going to help us a lot. Um, as it relates to him in particular, um, he's a guy that you obviously want to box the edges with. You know, you want to keep him inside the pocket. You, you, once he gets outside the edge of your defense, he's, he's extremely elusive, um, and he can create havoc. So um, I think from a defensive game plan, uh, it's pretty clear that we've got to do a really good job against the run, which makes him predictable uh, within the offensive structure. And then individually himself, um, we've got to keep him inside the pocket. Hey, Coach, over here. Um, on Saturday we saw Malik Neighbors was dressed out but not doing any, like, drills. What is his status? Yeah, he should be good. Um, I think today uh, is another recovery day. Um, I would believe that probably tomorrow he'll begin um, drill work. Uh, we'll be in a light drill work. But when we get into our normal routine of practice, he'll be cleared to practice. He had an ankle sprain. Coach, right up the middle. Yes, sir. Uh, you said something about last week about not deciding on the quarterback, you know, unsettling the offensive line. But both quarterbacks are similar, I would assume, in their preparation and your play calling. Is yes. that an advantage in that we're not really splitting – much up yeah there there's some great similarities between the two of them in terms of what they're able to do they both run extremely well they both can make plays outside the pocket and certainly we don't have to change the play calling there's not a dramatic difference between the two when it comes to play calling so you can imagine that you know when we're talking about both quarterbacks this is a this is a one A and one B. This is not a one and a two, and and both of them, you know, obviously you're going to contribute this year. Coach, are you comfortable naming Damian Ramos as your starting kicker or handling field goals, and then who will be handling kickoffs? Yeah, I think Damian Ramos is is going to start uh, at at the field goal position and extra point, um, and and I think we're still in the process of making a decision on kickoffs. Um, it's extremely competitive there. We feel, we feel like that decision is probably going to be made here in the next 24 to 48 hours. Brody Miller with The Athletic. You know, you've, you've handled quite a few of these quarterback situations before. I guess what, have you, what is your best strategy, I guess, for managing, say, whoever doesn't get the job, how to kind of keep them in the loop and engage throughout the season? Well, I think in this instance, they're – they're going to be, um, you know, so engaged because they know how close they are to playing every, every snap. It's not going to be, you know, put your helmet underneath the bench. Um, you, you need your helmet on um, because I think that they'll be that engaged in the game itself. So this is a little bit different where, you know, there might have been a, a clear difference in terms of how, and I think answering the question earlier is that, we're going to be natural in the ability to kind of flip to the next play with the next quarterback. This isn't that you have to turn over your play sheet and go to, um, you know, Jaden Daniels play calls or, you know, Nussmeyer, you know, game plan. You know, it's it's one and the same. So I, I think that that in itself um, keeps you so engaged in what's going on. Ryan, on your right in the middle. Matt Moscona, ESPN yeah. Baton Rouge. How does opening with Florida State a year ago help or assist in your game planning this week? Um, there, I mean, there's a new offensive and defensive coordinator for me. Um, you know, it's a whole new team. I, I don't know that it really helps as much as um, I can give and lend a little bit more, um, you know, to our coordinators. I meet with our coordinators, you know, um, you know, daily so I can give them a little bit of insight in terms of, you know, what – what they're about and, and, and how they play the game and what they're looking to do on offense and defense. But that's about it. Other than that, this is a whole new uh, operation for us relative to coordinators and, and the, uh, the football team in itself. 
Scooter Hobbs, Lake Charles, American Press. Uh, how, how long have you known who the starting quarterback will be? Um, how long have I known? Um, probably, probably 48 hours. It's been that close. Yeah. And does it annoy you at all that Florida State got that tune-up game in? No, not not necessarily. I think there's some pluses and minuses there. Um, like I said, I think we've got the advantage that they don't have any film on us. Um, you've got a new head coach. You've got new coordinators. You know, that in itself, there's the uncertainty of them knowing what to expect. Um, you know, so there is a bit of a trade-off there. Hey, Coach, Steve Schneider, WAFB. Uh, continuity on the offensive line, obviously important every game, but for this first game, uh, avoiding negative plays, whether it's penalties or missed assignments, put you second and third and long. All part of playing winning football, right? I mean, th those are – that's what, you know, you know, people ask me about, you know, how do you feel about Saturdays. And, you know, I enjoy Saturdays because uh, my Mondays through Fridays uh, are – anxious because I worry about all the things that you just mentioned, right? And when I worry about those things, those are the things that we we talk about every day in practice. And and we stop practice if we see those things crop up, right? And, and then you just got to go play. And you hope that your preparation, not hope, but know that everything that you do um, from December on has addressed that. And that goes to winning. And so... Yeah, all of those things are on my mind. Uh, but once you get to Saturday, uh, you've got to go play and know that what you just mentioned, all those little things, they, they go to winning. And if, you, if you're doing that, you're in for a long day. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you said you were going to get the team to the Dome Sunday before kickoff? No, we're going to get there Saturday. Okay. We'll get there Saturday evening. Um, we're going to stop for dinner on just the a way in. walk through then. Yes, yeah, we'll stay there Saturday evening, um, and then Sunday we get up, uh, we'll have breakfast, and then head over to the Dome. And then you don't bring them back? To the no, hotel. they come back to the hotel. Okay, so that's the first I've ever heard of that. Most teams do it in their ballrooms or whatever at the hotels. It, you're going to have a lot of night games here. Is that something that – Yes, we'll like work out. That's why I brought it up. I, I brought it up so you knew what our routine was. We will leave the hotel. We'll come to the stadium. Let's say it's, you know, an evening game here. We'll leave the hotel, we'll come in, we'll work out in the stadium, and we'll go back to the hotel. Yeah. Coach, over here to your right, Ed Daniels, WGNO New Orleans. Coach, are you a fan of these neutral side games, and will you encourage the university to have them as part of the menu moving forward? You know, I think each one of them um, needs to be looked at, um, it, it, you know, as a standalone, I think it's, I think it's important to uh, look at New Orleans as a site uh, because of our fan base. Um, I think we need to look at areas where we have strong fan bases and and consider, you know, um, those as neutral site games. Uh, I did them quite regularly um, where I was last year, and certainly the fan bases. Um, rallied around those. Um, if we feel like those can sell out those venues and make it feel like a home game, you have to decide to give up a Tiger Stadium game. That's a hard thing to do, right? Because of, you know, what this stadium does for a home field advantage. So that's a calculated decision. Um, but going to New Orleans certainly makes sense to me. Over here, uh, Brett Martel with AP out of New Orleans. Um, when we first started practice, you remember you talked about how there wasn't a lot penciled in relative to, you know, last 10 years in coaching. And uh, I'm wondering now, if you, beyond quarterback, are there certain key starting rules, whether it be the offensive line or, or the secondary, that you would be comfortable discussing today and the rationale behind some of those decisions? Sure. Um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, the offensive line has been one that, you know, the linchpin to the decision at the offensive line started and ended with the center position. Um, you know, once we felt comfortable with Garrett Dellinger at the center position, 
um, everything else was able to fall into place. Uh, and when I say comfortable at the center position, the ability to call out fronts, uh, the ability to feel comfortable snapping the ball, and then executing his technique. You know, there's a lot going on there, you know, and here's a guy who hadn't played the position. So, you know, that's a big ask. Um, guy coming off of surgery, um, not active in the spring. Um, he did an incredible job um, to place all of that on him and be demanding. Some of you were at the practice. I was pretty demanding on him and certainly required a lot of follow-up with him, spending time with him, making sure that he stayed confident in that, and he did that. Now, since that day, we were able to decide what was the best rotation in that regard. And we think Bradford at guard uh, and Frazier at guard uh, and Wire uh, and, and Campbell at the tackle position gives us the best chance with those five guys. And so, you know, Tremont Schwartz going to be in the mix. He'll, he'll get a chance to play. Um, we're probably not in a position right now where 72 plays for, for the inside guys and the outside guys is feasible at this point. We're going to have to probably play seven or eight guys. But that's kind of one of those position groups that um, was penciled in that is now much more, you know, solidified. Hey, Coach, uh, Glenn West, Go247. Uh, you guys have been mixing, you know, receivers really in and out all yeah. fall. Just how many of those guys do you expect to really significantly contribute uh, against Florida State on Sunday? Yeah, we're, we're going to go deep into that rotation. Um, you know, having Jack uh, Besh back and, and being able to up his uh, work volume um, and, and getting him running, you know, to the level that he's capable without pain um, has really given us the kind of flexibility that we needed at that position. Now we can move around guys to get suitable matchups. We can move Kayshawn. We can move Malik. Um, Lacey now can go to the field or play into the boundary. Um, you know, BT, get Brian Thomas gets to, you know, get into a position where we can move him around a little bit as well. So, uh, Dre Jenkins, as I mentioned, has probably been as consistent as anybody that we've had. So, um, it gives us really, um, a nice rotation and keep guys fresh. Um, and, uh, as, as, as I just mentioned, uh, I think that's seven guys right there. I, you know, seven, eight guys is, is what you're going to see playing for us at the receiver position. Hey, Coach, Matthew Bruni here. Uh, when you look at Florida State's defensive line, Cooper versus McClendon, uh, just what have you seen from that unit? Obviously, only one game. From there. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think first and foremost, you know, watching them during the season, you know, inside size, you know, at the defensive tackle position, um, they're not a group that's getting moved off the football. Um, and they rotate them in. Uh, they can go too deep inside out. Um, they got some new players playing off the edge. Uh, they lost some, you know, talented edge players, but there's still athleticism on the edge. But I would say that it starts inside out with their defensive line, which allows the linebackers to run. Um, and, again, what you can expect from this defense is – uh, lateral quickness, guys that can run to the football. Um, and uh, from a defensive standpoint, a team that, that's going to play some man coverage. Um, they do play a lot of quarters, but in their quarters, it becomes matchup man. So a team that has the athletes to, to match you up and the size uh, to match up against what will be for us, you know, one of the big offensive lines inside out with our center and two guards that, that – um, you know, we've had here. Hey, Coach, to your right, Jacques Doucet, WAFB-TV. Um, coach is yelling and screaming on the sideline. That's nothing new. Fans enjoy that. It's part of the entertainment to a lot of them. I'm just curious, in your career, did you take a look at some point and say, maybe I need to dial some of this back or my temperament or, or, or so forth in terms of being an effective leader as a coach? Yeah, I think we all grow. You know, I, I don't think if you – um, don't look at yourself and find out what's the best way to um, to lead and develop your players, then you're not going to be in this business very long. So, um, I mean, I have my moments like everybody else. Um, you know, my office happens to be on national TV. Um, so I have to be aware of that. Um, but 
you have to be able to communicate effectively uh, with the men under your charge. And you have to be demanding, but you can't be demeaning at, at any time. And so, yeah, I think there's been, there has to be growth. Um, you have to learn from your mistakes and you have to build off of that during your career. You've been at uh, some premier programs and, and we all recall the alignment you know, word that you threw around so much, but football wise, what luxury does the school, this team afford you that you're looking forward to exploiting? Maybe a new one? Well, I think the resources in terms of, um, you know, having the personnel, I mean, I, I can tell you this, you know, the, uh, the, the, the three things that stand out to me are nutrition, um, strength and conditioning, uh, and, you know, our medical personnel and, and how that affects um, and has affected our team and their development. You know, th those three groups working together in unison and having the, the physical plant, and, and when I say the physical plant, the, the nutrition center, the, the weight room, and, and then the facilities necessary in nutrition, um, you know, to bring all of those three groups together to service and serve our student athletes. Uh, this is about the student athlete and and providing those things necessary for our student athletes to to be the best they can be. Um, so that's the exciting part for me. Um, and and what ends up happening is the players begin trusting so much more um, because they see that you care about them when it comes to you know their nutrition. They see that you care about them when it comes to you know, injuries and their, their conditioning level. Um, Ali Gay, for example, is a guy that did not make it through any training camp in his previous years here. He did not miss a practice. And, and that's not just luck. Uh, that's training, um, that's nutrition, uh, that's an incredible medical staff, that's all three of those groups. We had two soft tissue injuries. And I'm here not to, you know, trumpet the, uh, you know, uh, LSU way as much as to answer the question on how those three groups in particular and having the resources necessary provide for the student athlete. Coach on your right. Uh, if I could ask a quick follow up to that one. Is this as healthy a team as you've had coming out of camp, number one? And does the lack of experience at place kicker maybe alter strategy on Saturday? Um, we got a week left. <laughs> Coming up to this point, um, you know, Corin Norman, you know, obviously we lost them to an, an ACL, so I never want to exclude somebody when they've had an injury and, you know, because it, it, it hits back on you later. Coach, you know, what, what about me, right? Um, but it is, uh, from, from an injury standpoint, this has been a great camp. I mean, it's got to be graded out from that perspective, and it has a lot to do with the way uh, Coach Flint and, and uh, Dr. Frakes and, and Bo have, you know, <laughs> developed this team. And then our players, and, and their commitment's been outstanding. So, yes to that. Um, you know what? When we make a decision on the kicker, we're all in. You know, we're, we're all in on – we're not going to uh, change the way we uh, operate the game and protect anybody. Um, we're we're going to – look, I, I like to use analytics in, in the game. We'll have somebody with an analytic book just so everybody knows. So when we second-guess the head coach later, um, you, you guys can – and that's your, that's your uh, opportunity. Um, and, and, and you're right to do that. But w I use the book, and sometimes I use my gut. Um, and answering the question is that uh, you can't do that and, and then go away from it when you have a kicker out there and you're, you're afraid of him. you got to let him kick. Coach, you've emphasized the importance of being multiple on defense. Florida State had, like, two running backs on every play. Um, three of them kind of carried the bulk of uh, the ball. How much does that impact your defensive plan, or do you think that was largely because of the conditions and the rain? No, they've been a split-back team. You know, Mike's always liked to, even when he was at Memphis and even at Arizona State when he's the offensive coordinator, he likes to run split back. And, look, the three backs are outstanding. You've got to get your best players on the field. So, 
in, in that situation, three wides, you know, he, he actually used, you know, one of the tight ends and split them out. But that's, that's his offensive structure. So that was not a surprise to us that he had two backs on the field. And uh, it's, it's a really good offense for them, and it's been effective. And, you know, we were quite aware of it coming into the game. Great. All set. Thank you.